Hello, my name's Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and welcome to another video review. Today we're taking a look at the AMD Athlon 2 X4 635 AM3 processor. This is the AMD Athlon 2 X4 635. It operates at a speed of 2.9 GHz per core, whilst running at voltages of 0.85 volts to 1.25 volts. It has a TDP of 95 watts and can run up to around 71, 72 degrees Celsius, so be sure that you have good thermal compound as well as a decent uh, heat sink cooler. Obviously you can buy a retail variant of this chip or OEM, obviously the retail will come with its own stock cooler, but if you are in the market for, uh, if you're buying this OEM, be sure that you get a uh, really good heat sink cooler because it will get quite hot. Also AMD are still using 45 nanometer technology and this chip is no different, it still uses 45 nanometer technology. Intel obviously now have moved to 32 nanometer technology and hopefully that's a move that AMD can move to in the very near future. It has a total of 2 megabyte of L2 cache but it's missing the L3 cache that the Phenoms have. The multiplier is locked on this CPU as it's not a black edition chip but that still doesn't stop us from uh, having a little fun and games with it and overclocking this particular chip. Every processor review that I do, I do feel that I am becoming quite repetitive because I talk about the design and styling of the chip. Frankly, it's purely to just sort of say that the chip hasn't changed over time. This chip still looks like the older chips that were used in the Athlon 64 days. The only chips that uh, looked slightly different to this were the old Athlon XPs because they didn't have this IHS shim on top, it was just the bare core. But since the Athlon 64 days, this has been the overall style, the same size, the same design and so forth. It is quite nice though, I, I will admit I do like having the heat shield on top because it does give you perfect contact when uh, applying heat sink uh, thermal compound as well as the actual heat sink cooler and it does give you all of the relevant information on top of the processor. It tells you various different codes on there including the fact that it's the AMD Athlon 2 and the model number. As I always say in every review uh, of a processor, if you go onto the internet there are websites where you can punch these codes in and find out exactly what they mean. They do refer to the speed of the chip, the model number, the voltage, TDP and so forth. Taking a look at the underside of the chip, once again no different. These chips really haven't changed. If you look at the Intel chips they're slightly different with the i7s and so on because they haven't got pins on them as such, they've got the actual holes and the motherboard's got the pins. AMD are still sticking with this overall design. It is a Socket AM3 processor, uh, obviously we will work with AM2 Plus as well. The Socket AM3 is actually 941 pins on the motherboard, but the chips themselves use 938 pins. This is because of AMD's transition period between AM2 and AM3. So th this chip can actually be used in an AM2 Plus board as well as an AM3 board as well. So it's quite nice the way that they've done that and you don't have to sort of fork out for a whole new motherboard. Uh, just like you have to with the Intel. Hence why AMD are always slightly cheaper uh, when it comes to motherboards, processors and memory because they've just tried to think about the customer that little bit more in comparison to Intel. And also in every AMD processor or Intel processor review that I do I like to sort of say a little bit something about the comparison of this chip so it gives you a, a better idea on sort of, you know, if you're paying the right price for a processor, what system's right for you and so on. With this it is an AMD processor, it's quad core and it runs at 2.9 GHz. If you want a similarly priced Intel chip you're looking at probably the dual core E6600 or 6700 depending on where you're actually shopping. You, you might be able to find a deal on one of them chips. Uh, but normally you're looking around 65 to 70 pound for this chip and the E6600 and E6700. But the only problem with that is two less cores when you compare it to this particular processor. If you want something that has the same amount of cores and the same speed, you will be looking at spending around 220 to 250 for an i7 920, 930 or even a 950 depending on where you're shopping. But the Intels have got two threads per core, so performance wise, it is going to be slightly better than the AMD chip but when you look at it on paper the amount of cores and the actual speed of the chips they are exactly the same so just to sort of give you an idea of the prices that you can spend when you're looking at an Intel system
Overall, I'm actually really happy with this processor. The fact that it's a quad-core, but it belongs in the Athlon 2 range compared to the Phenom 2 range, um, I, I was a bit dubious about uh, to start with, but it has given some fantastic results when you look at the startup times, shutdown times, and the overall Windows 7 experience score, as well as the benchmarks that we did in Cysoft, Sandra, and Everest. Obviously, you can go out there and you could buy a Phenom 2 uh, X3 for around the same sort of money, but the problem with that is uh, obviously you will get the L3 cache, which is always a benefit. But the reason you'd probably buy something like an X3 is in the hope that you'd be able to unlock the fourth core. If you're not an enthusiast and you're not someone who knows how to do something like that, then you are going to be better off getting something like this because it works straight out of the box, quad core, decent speed, and it is quite good value for money as well. Due to that, I'm going to give it four out of five stars.